Hi everyone, I'm here today talking about study sync and what you can do to have a more engaging lesson with some of these units. So we're going to start right here with our main study sync page and I'm going to just begin with unit one. I'm going to go ahead and click on my core ELA and I'm going to choose a text that I want my students to read. So let's say I go here to the instructional path and I want them to first read this part here, American literature and history. I'm going to go ahead and preview it. And as you can see here, they get to see a little video, which I can show to the whole class to introduce them to some of the concepts. And uh, what I'll do is have them read. Now, the traditional way that some teachers might have used in the past, um, and I know I used to do this too, is I would just probably assign either the book or I would use the online version and my students would read this article. Right. And so there's all kinds of tools here. They can listen to it. They can annotate. And so they would read this. So as you can see here, if I just kind of scroll down, I, they would read these little, you know, paragraphs and there's a poem here. And again, it, it kind of chunks it for them right all the way down. All right. They say this is about a 15 minute lesson uh, if you put it on the audio. And then at the end, there are five think questions, a couple of just main ideas, and at the last two, some vocabulary. So a very traditional way of teaching this would be just to go through the intro, maybe have some discussion, have them read it, annotate some main ideas, and then do the questions. So I sometimes would find that my students got really bored with that and weren't really engaging with the material. So what I do instead is I go over to Google, and I do have a, an account for Pear Deck. I really love Pear Deck. So I'm going to go ahead and join, log in. I already have my account set up. And what I'm going to do is uh, I just want to make sure that my, you know, that I have this set up. I can see here all the sessions that I've had. I can name my, so here's my American literature one that I already did. And I have done it for some history lessons, some poetry lessons, all types. So, what I do instead is I'm going to go back here to the reading. And again, if you work in teams, this would be great because if one person creates it, then all of you would have access to this uh, uh, assignment because it does take a little while to set up. So I would actually turn off the annotations and I can now copy and paste. So I can go here and I can copy and paste these little paragraphs. And what I'm going to do is open them up on a Google Doc now, uh, Google Slides. Now I can do Google Slides or I can do uh, just PowerPoint uh, because Pear Deck will use either one. So what I decided is I'm going to make this unit. And so as you can see here, I'm going to scroll down. Here's the cut and paste that I did. So here's Native Americans and I copied that little paragraph. I might have made the font a little bigger. So I'm going to do that throughout. I'm going to just keep copying and putting it on these slides, right? But I want my students to interact with this. So the cool thing about Pear Deck is that once you have it and you have done the add-on, so I go here. If you haven't done it, I would just go get add-ons and I would look for Pear Deck. And then it would automatically, uh, you know, have it there. Every time that you want to use it, it's already available. So there's Pear Deck, you would install it. And so since mine's already installed, I would just go here and I would open it up. And that's what you're seeing here right now, that it is an open, this program is already open and I could do a variety of things. So for example, I love using the templates that are already there. So the library of templates, or I can just add so that my students can interact with the slides that I already made. So for example, here's one that is provided through the templates. So I want to kind of check in with them. I'm going to do beginning of lesson. And there's different things you can ask them, you know, what did they do for homework? So if I click on it, it'll just add it as a slide. And so I can then take this, I can move it around. I could change the graphic if I think it's too elementary, I could change it, right? I can ask them how they're doing. I can, of course, delete it. Uh, if you go down uh, again to some of the choices, I love using these, uh, for example, some SEL you know, to get them going, see how they're doing. I might ask them, you know, before I even jump into all of this, uh, tell me a little bit about your weekend. How are you feeling? What, you know, tell me something positive. What's something that's stressing you out? So I might have them do a quick little SEL check-in. So I might even move that here before I actually start my lesson. And I might jump into, well, you know, things that stressed out early colonists, 
uh, our first, you know, uh, those who lived there in this land back in the, right, I can start and kind of connect how they're feeling, how they're doing, and things that are stressing them out in today's society and what used to stress people out in the, during the early American colonial period. So I'm going to just segue right into that. Okay, so then you can see here all the different choices that you can have. So this is the SEL one. All right. So again, I can go here. I can go to, again, beginning of lesson, during the lesson. So I wanted my students here to tell me what they already knew about American history. Then this one, I actually want them to turn to their partner and discuss with each other, interview each other. And then they're going to talk about what they know, what they've seen in movies, things like that. And then they're going to write it down. So all of these are slides that they can write. Then I'm going to give them these directions. So again, how do you make Steady Sync a little bit more interactive? Notice what I write here. I'm going to put them in groups of three or four, and I'm going to give, I'm going to assign each group uh, a number of slides. So they're going to be in charge of certain topics, right? As they're reading, they're going to highlight, it could be words, phrases, sentences that they all think is important, right? As I know it says both here, but the whole team. So they need to collaborate. Um, you don't want to put them just in groups just for group sake. You want them to actually have a conversation and say, why is this important? Why are we choosing this? Then I would have each student. So each student have, should have a computer. Each student should be writing. And I'm going to give them this, uh, this little concept. I want them to write a one sentence summary. And the reason I want it to go down to just one sentence is because I don't want them just copying and pasting the ideas they're getting from the reading. And I'm going to go over just very quickly what this SSBI method is, which is basically setting subject, big idea, or main idea. And so there's a little example here, and they could keep it really simple. And again, we're just trying to get them to summarize rather than just copy. All right, so then we get into the readings, and again, you can decide how you want to assign this. You might want to do this one all together. And then here's going to be, for example, one group. One group is going to just focus on Native Americans. They're going to read this slide. Again, I can go back here, and if I click on this one, it lets them type in uh, some kind of response. If I click on draw, and I'll show you how it looks like for the students, it will let them highlight, circle, draw something, or put some text message. So it gives them a lot more choices. So I like this one better. So all right, so that, let's just say they take turns reading. I might give each student a paragraph to read. They're going to read it to each other, and they're going to keep reading here. So they're going to read these four slides. And then they're going to come to this slide, and this is where I added a text box where they're going to summarize what they learn. Again, they have to all come up with the same idea. They're going to collaborate to come up with this sentence, and they're also going to add three bullets that supports this big idea. So let's say they say life for Native Americans was very blissful. They had lots of spiritual traditions. Then I would have them write three little bullets that would show me, well, why is it blissful? What are some of those traditions? And again, maybe the next group we'll get this one, which is the European contact with the Americas. This is the central idea number two. And so you would read these few slides. And again, they would do the same thing. And then my next group would do the American Revolution, and they're doing central idea three, the road to independence. And of course, you know, if my class is big, I might have, you know, three different groups doing the first uh, section and three other groups doing the um, early Americas and so forth, right? And they would do the same thing. Now, what I added also, because I always like to enhance a little bit some of these uh, units, is I found this great uh, documentary. It's about an hour long. I wouldn't show the whole thing. In fact, I'd only show about the first 15 minutes of this one that shows uh, the struggles of the early Americans. So now that they've all watched this, I would have, and you can vary this, but I would have each group present their findings. I might have them share uh, what they have on their Pear Deck, or they maybe they create a Google slide, one slide presentation. And so each group presents what they found. And then now I'm ready to do the think questions. And so here they are discussed. So first we're going to have a class discussion. Then they get to write these questions. And again, this is where I would add. And I'm just going to add it here since it looks like I haven't done it. I'm going to do a text. And it's going to load it. And there should be a little symbol at the bottom that shows me it's a Pear Deck type of slide. And there it goes. Okay, there's my little pair deck. And there's another one. And I'm just going to add that one. And I could, you know, if I highlight both slides at the same time, I can, you know, do a number of these. And that way I'm not clicking on each slide to, to add this feature. All right. So then 
my students, I would go ahead and just hit here. I would hit start. And all your students need is either their cell phone, they could do this on cell phone or on their laptops, right? Now, I actually like the student paste one because then each student is more individualized instruction. They're not waiting for me to go through each slide and or they can do it for homework. Or they can come back to it. So I like the student paste activity just like that. And now it's going to give me a code or a link. So if I have Canvas, I could give the link on Canvas. And sometimes I just like to project and give them the code. So the code is going to be right here on the corner. Let me just show you here. And there it is. So uh, again, it'll say, do you want you know to share it? Do you want the link? I just like to go to the teacher dashboard. There it is. And there's that code, right? So then I would write it nice and big. I would put that code. And so let's see if I have it here. All right. So then I would have this is what I would see on the side and I just did some a sample one on my cell phone I would see everyone's response I could see it this way I can see it this way and again I would see all of my students names I could see what they're writing live so am um, I I'm on the computer and I have 30 students who are doing this assignment I would see 30 responses showing up right here I can give them feedback right away I can put them give them a little star if I thought it was a really good response uh, again, you can project this if you're, once they're done and say, okay, so-and-so, I'm going to show your response. You had a great response. Wow, take a look, everyone, right? Let me show you another one, All right? So again, anytime if the student did some highlighting, again, it'll show me what the student highlighted. So there's this student, what they're highlighting. I might be able to walk over and say, yeah, okay, I need you to uh, tell me why you're highlighting. Can you add a text box here and tell me why is this important? Um, things like that. So again and then at the bottom it'll show me any students who hasn't responded yet so if a student is not doing their work i can walk over and find out if they're struggling they don't understand it right uh, the cool thing also about this is if you go back here to let's see my dashboard if you go back here to your actual website where you hold on to all of this and you go to your settings so i'm going to go here and i'm going to go to my account I want to make sure that certain features are turned on. So I'm going to go here, settings, and embedded in Pear Deck is Immersive Reader. So I want to make sure I toggle that and I turn that on so that uh, my students can then click on. So when they're in, uh, in this site here, they'll be have a little icon here that'll say Immersive Reader and it'll read it to them. It'll slow it down for them. Uh, again, lots of great features, especially it could read it to them in a different language. So that's powerful, right? So especially for your non-English speakers or your emerging English speakers. So again, this is just a way that I might deliver this lesson. So it takes it away from the traditional read a passage or a text and answer the questions at the end of the book. We want to move away from that, make it more interactive and more individualized. So that's pretty much a quick little lesson. I'm going to email uh, all of you and uh, uh, your department chairs this lesson that's going to be on Google Slides that you can then add, you know, your peer deck slide so you can make it a little bit more uh, to fit your needs. I'm also going to add this to uh, the link under the YouTube description here so that you can have access to this Google slide and you can use and change to make it your own. So I hope that helps. Thank you so much and I wish you the best.